welcome back to my channel this is Dom and an update on some of my painting projects um, all seems a bit uh, ECW this uh, last week or so um, partly because as I said I think many times I get inspired by the games that I'm playing or planning to play or the rule set I've picked up into what I paint um, and for CrackCon 3 um, Miller um, and I, Miller Miniatures, are going to be putting on a sort of Edge Hill inspired uh, English Civil War game of Pike and Shot. Um, and even though I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to need to take any troops along, um, and even though I've got loads of troops already, I realised I had quite a few sitting sort of in the pile of opportunity. And I thought it's a good opportunity to try and clear some of them. So I have been. So if you saw the last. Um, uh, Table update, I painted a unit of uh, pike and shot, and this is a second one. Uh, so this is Sir Henry Tillier's Regiment of Foot, um, which were largely green inspired, mainly because of the standard. And I have to say, I got some standards off the interwobble um, and um, followed this the colour scheme because I thought it was quite a cool flag, really liked it. So... Um, uh, as is the case with this sort of period, um, there wasn't really uniforms, but often um, a colonel or a major or a S Sir Henry here um, would hand out a certain amount of cloth in a particular colour um, that his regiment was going to be in. And obviously over time um, they got worn out and not necessarily replaced. But um, I thought having a bit of green within the unit so it looks um, somewhat uniform but not completely would go well. So this is pretty much entirely, just looking at them, yeah I think these are all Warlords plastics um, from the um, English Civil War box set. Um, they're a little bit dated um, figures but they come up alright. Um, I'm quite pleased with the effect. I've done them as, uh, as you can see, just as a pipe block. I converted one of them, converted. I just chopped the end off his pike um, to turn him into a stand bearer um, because the main stand bearer's got it all wrapped up uh, because he's waving it, um, sort of grasping the material. And I wanted to show off the flag. So um, there you go. That's the pikeman. And this is the two wings of muskets uh, to go with the pike. Again, um, Predominantly plastic, there's a couple of metals in here, um, but uh, I think they're Renegade um, that I somehow got hold of, I think I bought a long time ago. Um, but predominantly they're the plastics from Warlords. Um, again, a hint of green within them, um, just to sort of show they reflect that they're part of uh, Tilia's um, battalion or regiment. And um, I think that'll look pretty good on the table. So actually, that means I've got a few odds and sods of uh, musketeers that have got um, uh, the stands. Uh, the, I can't think what you call them now, but the musket stands, um, which I might well paint up. But other than that, uh, with the ones I'm going to show you, I pretty much finished all my um, ECW stash. Good grief, finished something, finished a project. And I probably have finished a project. I may just add the odd little... I know I'm going to get um, a Charles Commander uh, because for this CrackCon game that I mentioned, I need to have one. But otherwise, I think I've actually finished a project. I mean, you know, when's a project ever finished? But in terms of large regiments and groups, I don't think I need any more for the ECW. I've got loads. Um, so there you go. So next up, uh, a Commander for the ECW group. Um, now... I thought this was a Renegade figure, but someone tells me it might be a Trent miniatures figure, which are now owned by Sky, um, now owned by Warlords, I believe. Anyway, um, but the Cavalryman, beautiful figure, actually, really like him. I'm, I'm not sure where I got him from. Um, and the two accompanying him are two of the excellent bloody miniatures, um, sort of character pack figures that I thought would be good to put on this base. So um, I haven't done him as a named commander, just a royalist commander um i had a <laughs> spare gun barrel from the renaissance figures that i'm putting together and i just thought it was a bit of fun to uh to put it on the base just as a bit of um, uh, detroitus from the battlefield 
Um, so yeah, really happy with this cavalry uh, commander. I think he just came out beautifully. He's a lovely figure. Really pleased with him. Um, and the bloody miniatures, well, they're always just bloody good, aren't they? So next up, uh, this is, oh, it's very much a mixed bag of figures, this. There's some, um, uh, I think, the uh, Renegade figures, there's some Foundry figures, and uh, a couple of um, bloody miniatures in there um, that I've made up to be either a group of dismounted um, uh, Dragoons, or probably more likely as commanded shot uh, to accompany this uh, this group of royalist troops that I've that I've been working on, so um, nice bunch of figures, really really good. Um, some of them better than others, actually, if I'm honest. But um, and they've all got long boots on. You probably can't see, but they all have. So they probably all should be dragoons rather than commanded shot. Um, these are the two bloody miniatures in the middle there. Um, lovely miniatures again and just sort of fitted the bill just to sort of be part of this group as sort of officers which is what I wanted uh, in fact, I think that's another bloody miniature there at the back anyway that's another group finished some commanded shot ready for my royalist army and then I decided I probably didn't have enough artillery um, I have got plenty of artillery but um, everyone likes a good boomstick don't they so this is uh, from Empress um, I bought a few extra cavalry because I've still got some cavalry to finish off. So when I said I finished the project, I lied because I have got some cavalry and some dragoons to do. Um, but uh, infantry-wise and artillery-wise, it's, it's probably finished. Um, anyway, but this was a, a gun, a Seika gun from uh, Empress Miniatures. Um, I love the gun. I love this commander, even though he's got a bent sword, I've just noticed. Great. Um... Some of the other figures are a little bit skinny, a bit sort of um, thin, which is a bit disappointing, but um, I think the base has come out all right. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I, there's a bucket of water there, which I've um, used the water effect in. I don't know whether it shows up well on the screen, but um, yeah, nice cannon to put with the this particular group of um, Royalist uh, foot that I've been working through. So having worked my way through most of the foot um, that I've got to do for English Civil War, I found that I had a... Uh, I think I, I recall buying some figures um, from somebody on Facebook and when I went to pick up the figures, he had a whole load... He was selling some some uh, a friend of his, his old collection, and I bought them. I think they were Franco-Prussians that I bought. Anyway, um, he... He had a whole load of extra figures that he didn't really know what to do with. He didn't know what to sell. They were in a bit of a state. They were quite old. Um, and um, he said, would I like them? So I, I took them off his hands. Um, and these are part of them, I think. Um, I'm no, I don't know where they've come from. They're slightly odd figures, but I just thought they'd be great for a sort of vignette to go on the battlefield of these guys digging out a gun emplacement um, I was originally thinking about using them as a sort of mining diorama, um, but then I thought actually doing a gun emplacement would be fun. These are Renedra uh, gabions that, I've, uh, that I had spare, um, and um, yeah, just put these figures on the base just to make it look a bit of fun. You've got a guy with a shovel, guy with a pickaxe, guy with a, some sort of other pickaxe, and the guy with a shovel, and a pile of their equipment and the base. I'm quite pleased how this came out, should be. Yeah, so just a nice thing to go on the table, really. And these were also part of the sort of group of figures that he gave me. Um, these two, I wasn't entirely sure what they were supposed to be doing. They were running along and they had separate arms, and but there was also this uh, ladder in the pack. So I thought, right, maybe they're supposed to be carrying the ladder running up towards the wall. So that's what I've done. Although it was a bit of a bitch to get the uh, ladder to stick. Um, long enough. Um, if I was clever, I would have pinned it. But having the arm flexible and the um, uh, ladder flexible and getting them in the right position was a bit fiddly. I did uh, a couple of times um, swear rather loudly. Um, and also it needed a fair bit of green stuff to try and rebuild the shoulder blades <laughs> on a couple of them. So anyway, um, and there's some more of these um, sort of engineering type figures. Someone told me this guy of in the blast armor is uh, a foundry figure it's quite small um but um and as i say that was originally why i was thinking about doing these as a sort of uh, siege party 
um, but um, or a mining group. But uh, in the end, I just decided to do these guys just a sort of nondescript engineering group that can just be um, and put some flavour on the table. Um, but I'm quite pleased with them. They're just a bit of fun, dead easy to paint up because they've got those sort of nondescript browns and um, greys and sort of off whites, um, which makes it fun. And yet more ECW figures. Um, the guys running along with a, a, a petard. Um, I believe someone told me are also foundry figures again quite small it's interesting the uh, scale creep um, no idea where this figures from he probably is another one I would imagine that's um, uh, foundry maybe looks like it could be um, but the other five other four figures uh, the looters are from the bloody miniatures pack uh, well, I'm not sure this one's a looter, but anyway, that he has joined the looters ranks. The other three are definitely looters uh, from the Bloody Miniatures uh, figures from Richard. Um, they may well have a role to play in the upcoming CrackCon game, but um, they're lovely figures. And again, it was just nice to get them finished um, and largely finish a project for once in my life. So it hasn't just been English Civil War figures that I've been working on. Um, as you may know if you've seen any of my overlong battle reports, um, I've been doing a lot of 15 mil, both Napoleonics and O Group. And um, so I bought some more buildings to go along with this. So these are uh, these are 3D prints, actually. They're really nice little models. Quite pleased with them. Um, the roofs come off. Um, and they'll be ideal for actually either this these are supposed to be Russian uh, Russian buildings so I think in a pinch they'll do Napoleonics or Second World War which is a bit of a which is a bit of a bonus just painted up mainly using contrast part the paints and um, various washes um, quite pleased with how they've come out and they're quite quite nifty so um, <laughs> Those of you who follow the uh, Monday Night Plastic Crack podcast stream will know that, um, as a bit of a joke, uh, the guys got me into Badgers and Burrows, um, and um, uh, jokes on them because I absolutely love painting these models up. So we had Michael, um, who produces the figures, figures and did the rules for Badgers and Burrows on the stream uh, the other Monday, and uh, in honour of that, I painted up. Um, another another Badgers and Burrows model. I think I have about thirty now, something like that. And I really love doing these. So this is this is supposed to be a hound, a terrier, or something. It's a warden basically with a harness on his hand, with a crossbow in the other hand. Of course he is. Uh, I've no idea whether I'll ever actually play any Badgers and Burrows. Well, I probably will actually at Crackcom. I think someone's going to be hosting a game, and I may well give him a go just to see what it's like but I don't mind I just really find painting these figures um, so therapeutic they're such beautiful models um, they just you know kind of just when you need a bit of a break something different to do um, I really love doing it this is actually one of the new contrast paints that sort of uh, greeny color um, on the cloak um, not even with any wash that's just purely as it came out onto a gray base um, really like the colour, really nice. Um, so yeah, there we go, another one done. So and finally for now, again people who've uh, seen seen the plastic crack uh, will know that uh, one of my favourite uh, films is the um, I think it's sixties, seventies movie, uh, probably seventies actually, um, Fifty Five Days at Peking, which is um, an awesome film talking about the the siege of the uh, legature at uh, in Pe in what's now uh, Beijing at the time was just was peaking um by the boxer rebellion um and the uh, Chinese empire going up against multitude of um western should we say them countries who had um embassies and groups within the uh, peking uh, city and um, it's a great opportunity to, to sort of pit Russians and Austrians and Japanese and British and French and Germans all together against the uh, against the Chinese. Um, 
Now, I've been loved this film for a long, long time. It's one I remember as a kid watching. Um, in fact, I bought it just fairly recently again uh, and watched it again. I just so enjoy it as a film. And uh, stars Charlton Heston and David Niven, um, amongst, amongst many, many others. And um, uh, what spurred this was that the um, War Games Atlantic have just launched or just released... Um, plastic boxer Chinese figures uh, and pretty nice they are too so I've been working my way through a box of those painting them up and making them up but I also went to uh, Victorix Victorix Victorus Victorious Victorious I think they're called miniatures I put it underneath here um, they do a range of metal uh, boxer rebellion figures and uh, very nice they are too. So this is the uh, Force of Russians. Um, they wore in the summer these white um, uniforms and uh, apparently the infantry all had sort of yellow epaulets um, and um, a sort of dark green trouser. Very different to sort of other periods and other fronts. Um, but I thought it's a really nice model. So particularly like the, the officer. I think he's really cool. Really happy with how he's come out. Um, and I enjoyed doing them so much, I've just bought a whole load of French uh, to go with them. So I'm going to have some British, French, Russians, Americans, uh, to start with anyway, up against the uh, Chinese. I think I'm probably going to play um, Men Who Will Be King uh, rules, certainly a, a skirmish rule set for them, which is why I've based these individually um, for casualty removal. Anyway, there you go. That's what I've been working up uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks or so. Uh, apologies, there's not been so many videos. I've uh, been really busy lately and in real life. And um, I've got a lot of videos to edit, a lot of games to, ve to edit, and I just haven't got around to it. haven't had the mojo to edit videos. Um, painting and playing the games I've enjoyed but editing the videos is uh, sometimes quite tedious for particularly for the long uh, games anyway um, I hope you're all doing well I hope you're staying safe and I will see you all again soon this is Dom signing out